Hello folks and welcome to a tutorial on using multiple audio tracks in Premiere Pro. Um, now the temptation is when you open Premiere is you see by default three audio tracks. You can probably see it down here on the bottom pane. Uh, there we go, one, two, three. That's what happens with default when you open a new Premiere Pro project. And I've seen it time and time again where students just use those three tracks for their audio. Which is doable, perfectly doable. You can... Um, put all your dialogue or maybe two tracks and everything else on the third track why not put all your sound effects in uh, if you want to add music in you're going to have to have another track aren't you but I have actually seen students try and squeeze it all in on three tracks believe me that's going to present a rather bumpy ride with your production because it's going to limit your mixability now traditionally when producing audio, whether they're making music, whether they're making audio for film, TV what you're looking to do is to put all your audio Every simple audio element, like this dialogue, that dialogue, this sound effect, that piece of music, this bit of Atmos, all on its own unique track. And you can probably visualise it now if I say the word mixing desk. You can imagine one of those big studios with a huge mixing desk, um, you know, with one sound per fader, and you mix them up and down. Now, that's conventional for a reason, and that's because it works. Uh, so, now, Premiere Pro has the same facilities. It's just not that obvious. So what I'm going to do is going to try and piece together a bit of a project and then skip to the end and show you what I would do. So my students are currently tasked with putting together, sort of remaking audio for this rather daft horror spoof thing called The Forest. And uh, I've cheated, I've used all library sounds for this, just um, why not? I need the time. <laughs> so these aren't my sounds, uh, apart from the music. I made the music in Logic by pressing one note. So uh, there we go. And um, I've got in my library here all the sounds that I need. Um, so I'm going to start bringing them in. Uh, I could do with some glasses to see what I'm doing, but there we are. Um, I'm looking for my music. Right, there, there's my music. I'm going to just bring that in and drop it on track one. And a press go, see what happens. Right, so actually what I want to do is I actually want this to occur not at the very start. I want this to occur actually where something horrific happens later on, but I'm just going to mute that for now. The other sound that I pretty much want all the way through is the ambience. I've got some forest ambience somewhere. Right, there it is. European forest. <laughs> Let's play that in at the beginning. Um, let's see what that sounds like. There we are. It's a bit happy actually for this but I will show you now to show you what I'm going to do with it I would like this actually starting when the frame moves to this woman walking through the forest and I'll eventually put something else that initial opening sequence I'm just going to find the point where she goes in somewhere around there right let's move that There we are, so we should have now silence at the start, and then... There we go, there's my ambience. The police woman walking through the forest. Now we've got, a little further on, we've got some points where she's using a camera, and I've got some shutter sounds. So, so somewhere around there. And just at the point it flicks over to the camera, Let's see if I can find those shutter sounds. There it is. And as you can see, I've already used up my three tracks. So I've used up my uh, my three tracks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pretty much on. Don't forget to normalise the audio. That click is really loud. I'm just going to normalise all of these to minus six, as I've shown in other tutorials, so that everything peaks at the same level. It's going to make your mix much easier, It'll give you headroom, space. Uh, so there we go, I've got the ambience and the shutter click now peaking at minus six. So, if we want to add something else, well this is, I've run out of tracks. 
I've got the sound of this woman walking, for example. So for this, this is what you do. If you want more tracks, is you go down into your audio track list and you simply right click and add track and it'll pop another one below. There it is, it's live. I'm gonna bring in some some shuffling feet sounds. So maybe it'll be the wrong sound, but anyway, let's pop that in. So you see how that's now going onto track four. I'm gonna normalize it. Yeah, and I'm just to uh, bring it in where I want it. I'm gonna put on just where we get up nice and close there and pop that in. So we've now got Actually, I could bring that in earlier. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting all the individual pieces of audio, the different audio elements on different tracks. Why? Well, it's going to give me the ability to mix very easily. Now, this is our mix. Everything's blasting here at the moment. You see the level going up to zero. And all these sounds are very subtle. So, Premiere, when you open up uh, make a new project, it comes with the audio clip mixer. I don't like it. I don't use it. If you've got a use for it, and can explain to me how you use it, then please feel free to comment below because I honestly can't find a use for it whatsoever. Uh, I much prefer the audio trap mixer, which doesn't come already plugged in to a default project. So you need to go into Windows, audio trap mixer, and it adds it along here. Um, and the audio trap mixer, you think, well, it looks exactly the same. What it does is the audio clip mixer only lights up the channel when sounds passing through the audio track mixer shows all your faders live all the time and also has this which is a whole area of plugging in effects and processes globally across the entire track which i'll come to in another tutorial so now that i've done this i'm going to go through a uh, name of audio first one was music wasn't it then it was ambience uh ambi and so I can't see. If there's a typo there, forgive me. I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> uh, shutter. But I spell that one wrong, have I? And then, what's that last one? Footsteps is the wrong place, but it doesn't matter. This is footsteps. You can see that actually. Um, down here as well, if you expand this, you'll see the, the names. There we go down there left hand side. So it means now I can do this. Uh, I know about the museum, I've got to the ambience, bring it right down. I want the shutter stronger. I want the footsteps. Let's try a little louder. Also I'm gonna mix on, on the fly here. So no, right down in level. I want it right background. There we are, much better. Okay, in the wrong place. So you can see where I'm coming from, okay? This is why I'm using more than three tracks. And so you keep going until you get this. Right, now looking at this, this is the project a bit further along. I've tried to size it so you can see the important elements relating to this tutorial. Look at the audio track mixer now. This has now got 10 tracks in it, all right, which means there's 10 tracks audio down there. I know it's minute, so I'm trying to squeeze it all onto my sque screen. I'm trying to squeeze it onto my screen. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, squeeze it all onto my screen. And um, well, as you see, I've got different sounds on different tracks. And can you see how I've used the mix? The stuff which is background is really low in the mix. The stuff which is up front is high in the mix. I've even used a little bit of panning here and there. You'll see well, I've got like a a rather evil looking creature who's slightly left of the screen. I thought, well, I'll pan that to the left, give that sense of realism. Don't go hard panning, it'll just make it sound like the headphones are broken. But so a little bit of subtle panning can help with that stereo spread when you need it. So, panning is there when you place the sound slightly left or right 
in the stereo field so it comes out more on one headphone or more on the other and give it a sense of sounds over there or over there all right so um that's what that is um i've also got this little lot don't worry i'm going to come to this in another tutorial but these are all the global pug global plugins that i've added to the mix including equalizers and compressors i've got a limiter on the master bus uh, to bring everything back up to zero because without it it was it was um, about 20 odd decibels below zero been far too quiet as a broadcast um let's see what this looks at and you will see now why i've done this i haven't used any key framing at all it's all in the mix so here we go There we go. And there's the importance of using multi tracks for your audio production when you're making films and movies, things for film and TV. So, uh, okay, I know if you might have noticed that the footsteps weren't in sync. As I say, I nicked them off a library. Um, don't do that, it just doesn't work, does it? But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was of help.